officially starting Chamber Live. Good morning, everybody. I'm Simon from the East Lancs Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to all our joiners. Hope you're keeping well and safe and self-isolating um, as required. Different times, difficult times, but um, your, your Chamber of Commerce, all the Chambers of Commerce, because we're being joined by Chambers of Commerce far and wide, but East Lancaster Chamber of Commerce are here for you uh, throughout this period to keep your business supported, but actually also to keep individuals uh, supported as well. Uh, this is the first in a series of Chamber Live. Live stands for learning in an interactive virtual environment, which I managed to remember that. And um, it's a series of topics through over the over the coming weeks and potentially months that we think are relevant to the current situation. I'm going to mute everybody now, um, just to keep the background noise down. You are, you do have the ability individually to unmute yourself uh, if you're asked either by myself or by Ram uh, to pose a question. And that's the way that's the way we're going to handle questions this morning. If you've got a question, you, you've got two options. You can either virtually raise your hand uh, using Zoom, which will show the meeting host that you've got your virtual hand raised and then we can then bring you in. Or if you want to put a question in the chat box, uh, when Ram's doing his chat, when Ram's doing his presentation, I'll be able to look through the chat box and moderate your questions and we'll come in with your questions from time to time. Um, try and avoid keep just, if everyone, if all... 72 people switch the microphones on at the same time it'll be chaos uh, so try and um, try and stick to that protocol either raise your hand virtually or uh, use the chat box to pose a question uh, before we get stuck into it and just in case we do have any any people who leave part way through i'm going to do a bit of pr at the very beginning please do look at chamberlive.co.uk yes we bought the domain chamberlive.co.uk that will take you to the the regularly updated Chamber Live page with all the events on an event, right? And what our future topics are. We've got topics on debt collection. We've got topics on the employment law situation and what the impact of home working might be and how you might need to look at how your business is protecting itself. There's a whole raft of topics. We're also very interested to hear from you on suggestions of other topics uh, that you think might add to the portfolio of the Chamber Live offer. We're very much evolving this as we're going along and we would, as ever, uh, welcome your suggestions and your involvement. Finally, last chamber plug, any questions about the coronavirus situation, what we do have on our website is the coronavirus hub, and that's been uh, moderated for us by the British Chambers of Commerce, and it's, it's updated on a daily basis with the very latest government position and links to all the right gov.uk pages as well. So uh, as, a, as a way of trying to see through all the clutter and some of the nonsense okay, that's yeah. on social media, uh, yeah, please do. Um, Forgot to can't read that bit please do um have a look at the coronavirus hub on social uh, social media uh, that's it from me at the, at the beginning we'll wrap up at the end as well um i want to introduce our i'm going to call him our guinea pig <laughs> because um this is very much a learning curve for us with chamber live and with virtual meetings this is our first one and we were absolutely delighted when ram was the first to reply and and agree to be our um very generous host and presenter and victim uh, so um, i'm sure everything's going to go swimmingly ram so i'm now going to make you the host and um and hand it over to you so uh, please welcome everybody ram gupta from nibble information systems over to you ram thank you simon um hello everybody there's no there's no pressure there then is there hi right, simon uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful introduction and thank you everybody for giving up your time and your precious time this morning to, uh, to, to join us in this first inaugural Chamber Live event. It's a bit, um, it's a bit strange uh, sort of talking to this many people um, from the comfort of your living room, but um, I think this might be a norm that we all need to get used to at some point in our lifetime. Uh, certainly in the unprecedented times that we're having now, um, it's, a, it's a great show of strength, uh, solidarity, and solitude of us wonderful Lancashire businesses that so many of you have given up your time, your precious time to come together and to, and to participate in the first inaugural Chamber Live event. So uh, a personal thank you from uh, myself. Um, and I think you should all give yourselves a round of applause. You're all muted, so you won't be able to hear each other, but give yourself a round of applause to, uh, to commend yourself on what, you, on what you're doing. Okay. So um, 
we want to run this session as an interactive session, so please feel free to interrupt me um, whenever you want to, because I've got a habit of droning on about stuff. Um, you'll find my hands and legs will wave everywhere, so I'm going to try and pin myself down a little bit like this and try to be a little bit formal. You've probably seen Max Headroom. If I'm at, I look a bit like Max Headroom at the minute, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try and stay as still as possible, so I promise I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do that for you guys. Right, okay, so um, this session can run however you want to, it to run. Um, I intend to do a short presentation to you. Um, we expect the presentation to last no more than about 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, feel free at any point in time to interrupt um, and to ask relevant questions. Anything that you need to ask, uh, anything that you're unsure of, because we want you to get the best out of what, what we're telling you. Um, right, okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen with you. Here we go. Can everybody see the screen? Um, yes, I can see some nods. I can see some nods there. I can't hear anybody. Yeah, but I can see some nods there. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, so the only way to do great work is to love what you do. It doesn't matter where you do it from. Um, a wonderful person cut with it by the name of Steve Jobs, um, the CEO of, of, uh, of Apple, the former CEO of Apple before he passed away and founder, um, came out with those great words. I think what he, what he means by this is, is basically just be yourself. You know, great work is great work. Uh, whether you're at home, whether you're in the workplace, you could be sat in Starbucks. Yeah. Use technology to enable yourself. It doesn't matter where you are. Don't be embarrassed about where you are. So the whole point of today is that we're going to talk to you about working in isolation effectively, how to work from home safely, securely, and effectively. Um, for those of you, uh, those of us who think we're in isolation, are we? I don't know. I mean, if this is what we call isolation, bring it on. Yeah, there's, there's 70 or 80 people here, uh, all connected, all talking to each other, all networking, all, all together. And that's what really makes me um, I'd say passionate and very emotional about this COVID uh, crisis that we're in, is that we're all together and we're going to come out of it together. So some discussion points and some knowledge base, uh, which I'd like to share with you. Um, again, as I said to you, I don't want to bore you, so I don't want you to be that person on the bottom right hand side of the screen who's fallen asleep at the, uh, at the sound of my voice. So please, 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 please um, get your questions in. Yeah, um, uh, I can't promise I've got the answers to all the questions, but um, whatever answers I have, I'll give to you. Whatever I don't know, I'll just make it up. So don't worry about that. Um, so what we want to do is follow a small structure. I don't do structure very well, but this will, this will help me. Um, so I want to talk to you first about remote working and the remote workforce. So how could the remote workforce look in three to five years' time, maybe even in 12 months' time? Um, how would it change your lives? Uh, what do you need to account for? Um, what considerations do you need to have when you're working remotely? Um, VPN, VDI, RDP, COVID. Um, it's not only medical professionals that can uh, bring in acronyms, as IT people can as well. So, um, so our acronyms are VPN, VDI, RDP, PS, all of that, and I'm hopefully going to explain to you how that will um, help you effectively work from home. Uh, we'll then go on to talk about remote, remote work tools and applications. So um, up, until, up until maybe a few months ago, maybe even a few days ago, um, I'm sure if you heard the words uh, Teams and Zoom, you probably thought Zoom was a, was a car driving past at rapid pace, right? Um, Zoom is now one of the leading technology companies in the world, and Zoom is going to be the future of how we, how we um, inevitably communicate and speak with each other. When working from home, we're going to touch on security. Um, we're not talking about locking your doors, we're talking about literally how to be responsible and secure your business. Uh, inevitably, you are working from home, but you are part of your, you're still part of your organization. So security is absolutely paramount um, when you're, when you're uh, thinking about or actually conducting your work from what we would class as an insecure environment, being, being home. Um, we'd like to then round up with an interactive uh, Q&A. Um, hopefully we'll get some questions from you, from you people and we'll, we'll get some really good experiences on how 
you've, you've, you've coped and managed to very, very quickly uh, respond to this crisis and actually, you know, and actually implement your business continuity plans. Um, we'll then do a summary and roundup, and then you can all get back to your day jobs. So I'll get started. So I'll get started with a quotation, with the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Um, now, I don't know whether um, a lot of you have been experienced in working from home or whether you do that very often, but the wonderful thing about technology uh, these days is that it allows you to work from just about anywhere. The proviso of that is you need a device and an internet connection. As long as you've got a device and an internet connection, you can, you can log in and work from anywhere. That's good for you, it's good for your business, it's also good for your, for your employee, employer. Um, in this section, I just want to really uh, talk about some good habits. I mean, we've, we've operated a, a remote workforce for about um, 10 years. So uh, we, have, we have a workforce abroad and we have a workforce um, in, in the UK. So um, we don't all sit in one place, we all work remotely, uh, particularly the work from a force from, from abroad. And what we've seen particularly in the last, I would say the last probably couple of years is, is, is habits. And we've tried to refine our habits to, to make working from home more productive. So the first thing is get up in the morning, right? You know, um, don't change your daily routine. So when, when, you, when, you, when you're getting up, you, need to, you know you need to go to work, you need to get in your car, de-ice it, get to the office, you'll get up an hour earlier uh, to get a shower or whatever. Don't change your habits. Get up in the morning, have a plan. Um, don't think, because I'm working from home, I can get up an hour later or whatever else. Um, it's my strong advice to you, you fall into bad habits. Invest in good technology and use IT. Um, so what does that mean? Um, most people from home um, access things like YouTube, Netflix, and, and everything else. Is, 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 that, is that a good use of technology? Of course it is, because that's very appropriate to the home environment. What does, what does the business environment need from you? Right? It, needs, it needs a good device to log in, to, to, to be able to log into the workplace, and it needs a good connection. As long as you have a good device and a good connection, yeah, you won't struggle working from, 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 from anywhere. So, so our, our advice is uh, invest in good technology. Don't think because you're at home, you don't need to invest in good technology. You can just use an old laptop. You can use, um, you can use a, a, a dodgy broadband connection or, or a guest network. You know, do invest in good technology is our advice and, and do actually make use of it. Um, create a work environment, organize yourself. So, Basically, um, in lessons that we've learned from working from home over the last few years is you need to separate and isolate yourself almost in a, in a separate working environment. It's very stressful, um, I would say, if you're working in your living room with an armchair, um, you will never separate your home environment from your work environment. Now, this could last for a month, this could last for two months, this could last for three months. This might end up being how business business works um, going forwards. So if you have the space in your home, don't forget, it is your home. Um, create a work environment. It might be small, it might just be a chair, it might just be an area where you can put your papers and you can leave that stress behind. Just close the doors on that stress, leave that behind and come into your home. Dress for success. Right, so, so it's, it's okay to wear pajamas, it's okay to, it's okay to dress down. Um, um, but do your customers really want to see you that way? Um, if I was in, if I was in pajamas or had my string vest on now, I mean, I'm not sure how that would go down in this meeting. Um, I might get more, I might get more visitors. I don't know. Who, who, uh, or everybody might just end the call. Who knows? But, but dress appropriately. Think. In, in, think in ten minutes, I could have my next meeting. I could have my next meeting in ten minutes. You know, so don't think. Right, I've got my next meeting in ten minutes. Quickly, I've got to brush my hair. I've got to get my shirt on. You know. I've got to make my cup of tea. I've got to be organized. Uh, dress for success. Um, I can't stress the importance of that. You also feel better. Have a shave. Um, not everybody, of course. I, apologies, ladies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have, a, have a shave. You know, look, look like you're actually at work. Um, it will help you 
and it will help and, and it will help you actually feel that you're at work. Set your tasks. Um, again, it's no different to when you're in the office. When you walk into the office, I don't believe when people walk into the office, they set out to do a bad job. You know, uh, who's woken up in the morning and thought to themselves, today I am going to do the worst job I possibly can, right? I'm going to really mess things up for the business that I work for, right? Yeah, it happens by chance, right? Yeah, everybody sets out to do a good job, yeah? And it's down to your, it's down to your personal planning that, that, helps you, that helps you to do that, to, to, to achieve what you've set out to do. So please plan. Uh, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Don't feel guilty or accountable for every minute. Now, I'm a big advocate of this. Right, so when I start, first started working from home, I'd take a phone call, right? Um, I'd be walking around the garden or something like that because I was at home, right? Yeah, I was in my environment. Um, somebody might hear a child in the background and they say, oh, Ram, where, where are you working from today? And I'd very sheepishly say, oh, you know what? Um, I'm working from home today. And I almost feel guilty about it, right? It doesn't matter. You're working from home. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're working from. Yeah, it's the work that you do that matters, not where you're doing it, not where you're doing it from, right? So don't feel guilty. I rang, um, I, I, did a, I did a Teams call with one of my uh, colleagues uh, just a few days ago, and because um, they're isolated. And he was feeding his child. Uh, if Chris Ginger's on the call, he'll know who that is. Um, um, just put your hand up, Chris. Um, and he was feeding his child, 18 months old, right? Yeah, don't feel guilty. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I could hear him in the background. He was eating spaghetti. I wish I could have some, right? Um, but don't feel guilty about being accountable for every single minute of the day. The second part about this is, is you need breaks. Yeah, you need breaks. So use your time productively. Um, it's very easy to get caught up in things like daytime TV. Um, I can probably name all the daytime TV shows that you want. Um, yeah, um, I, 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 I love them. Um, but use your time productively. It's, it'll be obvious. It'll be obvious if you're non-productive from home. And I think working from home is an absolutely beautiful place to be. So if you make it work for your business, it could be a norm going forwards. Now, I'm not saying that businesses will allow everybody to work from home five days a week, but perhaps the odd Friday, perhaps the odd day where childcare is child needed, perhaps, perhaps the odd afternoon you can go home and work. Once you build that trust, I think your employers will give you 100% trust until you break it. So use your time productively, make sure that you plan what you're doing and make sure that you actually achieve what you set out to achieve. Take short breaks. Yeah, um, again, I'm gonna rush through these because I'm probably going on a little bit too much about this. Um, Simon, am I okay for time? Just not brilliant, yeah, I'm good for time. Take short breaks. Uh, again, I can't stress the importance of that. I've found myself on many occasions uh, getting about 6 a.m. in the morning and still being sat there, literally sat there at 7 p.m., right? Take your breaks. Um, make that absolutely essential uh, in your working environment. Um, it, might be, it might be to take a walk in the garden. It might be to take, uh, pick the kids up. It might be, it might be, it might be to just, you know, go out and have a fag, um, get, make a cup of tea. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. If you look at your workplace and you look at how much time you probably spend, I won't say waste, talking to other people, because after all, we are human, aren't we? We do talk. We do like to talk. Um, you can guarantee by, by taking those short breaks, it won't even account for a tenth of the time that you probably wasted the workplace. So do take your breaks. Enjoy your work. Be proud of yourself. When I wrote that, it meant something to me. And I'm trying to think what it meant to me. <laughs> but um, what I take from that is, is Enjoy where you work, yeah? Um, be proud of the fact that you can work from, from home or work from rem remote locations. Um, just, be, just be yourself, yeah? Don't, don't, don't feel bad about it. Um, you, you, can, you can be as productive outside your workplace, probably more productive outside your workplace than, than, than you are in the workplace, yeah? And don't think that you're outside. Um, there's technology that puts you right in. Exactly, you could be sat at your desk. You could literally feel like you sat at your desk. And we'll talk about that technology shortly. Breakout, posture, exercise. Right, okay. Very, very important. Um, you're going to have a lot of screen time. You're going to have a lot of laptop time, a lot of phone time. There's, 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 uh, I don't know whether we've got any medical professionals here, but I, I'm not one. 
But um, certainly, when you're working in IT or you're working a long time on a screen, do stretch. Uh, do look at your posture. Sit up. Don't sit like I'm sitting at the minute, like this, slouching. You know, every so often, um, this is a good tip. Push. Push your neck forward. You'll, you'll, you'll feel your spine stretch. Yeah? Yeah? Just give it a go. Put your hands behind your head. And push your neck forward. And you'll actually feel your spine stretch. You, you, you'll feel fantastic. Because... Because if you don't do that, you, you, you can end up with, with, with some very, very serious um, issues that, that obviously then will inhibit anything else that you do with your work and your family. But um, breakout, yeah, make sure you take those breaks. Um, posture is very important. And if you can fit it in, exercise. Why not? Right? Yeah. You know, organizations spend an absolute fortune um, putting things like, I don't know, uh, gyms, pool tables. Uh, walking trails, all that into the workplace, right? For, for staff well-being, yeah? What could be better than you working from where you're working from, yeah? So, so, so do use the environment that you're in, and again, just don't feel guilty about it. Uh, get yourself a good chair, get yourself a good desk, and, 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 and use it. Separate your work and home time. Um, again, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, um, and, it, and it can have the counter effect if you're not able to do this. Um, I, I think your, your family comes first. Um, you have a responsibility to your family to, to give them the time that they need. But obviously, your family need to understand that when you're at work, you're at work. Set yourself a time. So I'm available between this time and that time. Outside of that time is your family time, yeah? So set your work time and set your home time. Don't make your living room your workplace because your living room is your family place. Think responsibly. Um, okay, so, so just because you're uh, remote, remotely working, it doesn't mean that you're available 24-7. Uh, so just think responsibly about, about what you're doing and, and who you're doing it for. Um, the ability to, be, to, to, to work from home, to ability to dial in has been around for a long, long time. And, um, um, some employers exploit the staff um, in, in, in using that technology, others are more understanding, but just think responsibly in using technology. Get comfortable, I think we've covered that. Collaborate, speak to your team, you are not alone. We will show you how you can speak to your team later in this presentation. Uh, hopefully, if we get some time, we'll go through uh, a product called MS Teams, uh, a, collaboration, um, a collaboration platform, there's many others, um, but team seems to be the favorite at the minute. But pick the phone up, speak to your team, chat. You're not alone. You're not, you're not sat there by yourself. You're not isolated on an island. Yeah, you're, you're, you are connected. And we're, we live in a connected society. It's very hard to be disconnected in this society. Um, technology connects us. Our feelings for each other connect us. Our workplace connects us. So don't feel isolated. Speak to your team. You're not alone. Set clear boundaries, switch off. I think we've covered that. To be fair. So how can working from home uh, change the landscape of, of how business could look in the future? I'll rush through this. Um, travel. So brilliant. You know, you, you, you're going to save money on, you're going to save time on travel. You're going to save money on travel. Um, it, it's just a fantastic thing, isn't it? The most you're going to travel is probably from your bedroom into your, into your office um, room. Um, it's, it's probably 50 steps right, for most people. So travel is a, is a big factor. Company vehicles, um, could we see the um, eradication of company vehicles and company vehicle schemes? Would people need them? Uh, would, will people travel less? Um, we, we saw the first e-meet, um, the, the first, what do you call it, the first e-meet, um, the, the, the government thing that, that happened on BBC News just, just yesterday. Uh, the first e-briefing, thank you, I've, I've, I've got the term now, the first e-briefing. You know, everybody was sat where they were sat, and it was brilliant. Could you tell? No. Business attire, um, maybe the suit is finally dead. I certainly hope not. I love wearing suits. But maybe the suit is finally dead, the suit and tie. Um, it's as good as dead in America. Um, it's coming through to the UK. Um, I think it will, again, change the way we look at what we wear for work. Ram, I'm still seeing your slide that says working from your home um and with set clear boundaries but i think you're talking through another slide now aren't you 
No, I, I'm on the same slide. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Fine. Yeah. Um, just on the right hand side. Can you see that? Oh, I can't. Oh, sorry. That's that's my fault. The chat box is blocking it. Got it. That, I'll I'll go away fine. now. It's okay, Simon. Yeah. Uh, Simon, a any questions? By the way, um, in, in the chat box at this moment in time. Yeah, I've had um, I've had one from Ram. Uh, sorry, for your Ram. Uh, from BIP, how important is it to have social interaction during this period amongst our contacts, customers and networks? Um, I, I think it's a brilliant question. Um, I, we're, we're, we're human beings after all, right? Uh, human beings need, we're, we're social animals, are human beings. We, we need social interaction. Now, social interaction could be either physical face-to-face -face, or it could be like this, yeah? This is social, social interaction. Um, we're, we're, we're sharing the same time, we're sharing the same topic, we're sharing the same conversation, we're, we're sharing the same workplace, right? We're, sharing, we're, just breathing, we're just breathing different air, aren't we? Yeah? I think it's extremely important for our, for our um, stress levels, our mental and physical well-being, and I don't think that element of it will ever, will ever disappear. Um, I just think we will do it differently. Does that answer the question? Got a thumbs up from Bit. If anyone wants yeah. to put um, any further questions, either raise your hand. There's a raise hand facility in Zoom, which which will give us a little icon saying that we can bring you in, or put your questions in the group chat. Uh, general discussion. We're going to in the LinkedIn group afterwards. So a lot of the stuff that's going in the general discussion group in the group chat will be great in the general discussion afterwards. Go on, Ram. Back to you. Man. Right. Brilliant. So the last point on this slide is family and work balance. Um, what I mean by that is this crisis has given us the massive opportunity. We all talk about we work too hard, we work too long. We can, this gives us the opportunity to work smarter. Uh, we have been given the opportunity to get this family and work-life balance, which means we should have less stress in the workplace, less stress at home. It's about how we manage that. Think about how you can achieve that family and work-life balance. Lunchtime, it, it's, it's coming towards spring right? Coming towards spring. Don't feel bad about spending 15 minutes in your garden uh, or doing some weeding. It doesn't matter. Your, your, your employer rings you. What you're doing, tell them, I'm just spending 15 minutes doing some weeding in the garden, right? I'll be back on Teams in a minute, right? Does, does it matter? It doesn't matter, right? When you're in the office, does your, does, your, does your manager ask you for accountability for every single minute of what you're doing in the office? No, right? So, so get that family and work-life balance Embrace this opportunity, make it work, and that's how we'll embrace that opportunity. Uh, social isolation, I think we've covered. Any questions on that previous, previous slide? Before I go to this one. I'm not seeing anything in the chat box, Ram. No? And no one's got their hands raised. Have we lost anybody? Have, have, have they all gone to sleep? No, you, you, right. you've, no you've, actually got, you've actually got more viewers than you had at the beginning. So, so some people have, <laughs> no, one's, no one's left yet. Right, well, we're going to get a little bit technical now, right? So, um, so uh, hopefully, I, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So, um, I, I want to make this little bit interactive, if I could, right? Just for a very, very short period of time. Do these acronyms mean anything to anybody? BPM, BDI, RDP, TF. I know they sound like diseases, don't they? People need to unmute the microphones. If I've, they I've, want just to chat. Okay. I've just done that. Okay. I've just done that. I'm all fair with them. Yes, I, I use VPN. Brilliant. I don't use VPN. I don't know what CS stands for. Yeah, lovely. Right, okay. Thank you. Okay. Right, I've just muted everybody again. So, right, okay. So, um, in this section, I want to talk to you about VPNs, VDIs, RDP, and CS. Um, okay. Maybe up until about a few months ago, these things may have been, uh, Simon, you might need to just, I'm just going to unmute you. Sorry. Um, unmuted. There we go. Yeah, you're unmuted. Brilliant. Okay. So these things may have just been acronyms, but these things now are going to shape how we work um, um, our, our businesses and how we work our lives. So these are connectivity methods that allow remote working. Um, oh. I'm, I'm not going to read that joke out to you. You can probably read it yourself. Why didn't the IT person catch the virus? Because it's ransomware. Right, okay. Yeah. Good. Mm. Um, 
<laughs> Dear me. Dear me, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's uh, we're not getting paid for this, you know, Simon. So you know. <laughs> have you been Have you been doing weeding in the back garden, or doing weed in the back garden, Ram? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Excellent. So, how do we connect from wherever we want to connect from uh, into our branch office or branch offices? So, we all, uh, as organisations, run corporate networks. What connects those corporate networks is something called the cloud and the internet. Um, so no matter where you are, you get a connection to the cloud to the internet, which then forwards it to your, to your corporate network. You get a firewall giving you some authentication and you connect. It's as simple as that, right? So types of VPN, site to site, SSL, IPsec, PPTP, um, all have their traits, all have their security implications. So what I want to talk to you about in this section is what's appropriate um, and when it's appropriate. So um, I think this might need to be a little bit interactive, otherwise I'll be talking to you, but I'll just, I'll just carry on for a bit longer with some of the explanations. So you've probably got a laptop now, most of you, and, and you're probably working remotely. So a, a big part of that will be to be able to dial into work. Um, these are basically ways to connect into your workplace, right? So if you've got two branch offices that are separate, you will have something called a site-to-site -site VPN. It's a permanent link yeah, between, between two offices. So you walk into your office, you sit at your desk, and you're immediately be able to connect back to your headquarters or wherever your files and your folders and your applications are kept. That's what they call a site-to-site -site VPN. It is always on, yeah? SSL and PPTP VPNs are probably what you're using when you're dialing in from home. So do hands up anybody who, when they get home or get to a remote workplace, have to dial, dial into your workplace, physically dial into your workplace. Yeah, I see some hands going up, right? Okay, brilliant. That's what they call a, a, a um, that's what they call a VPN. That's, it's not a site-to-site -site VPN. That would be PPTP or very, very likely SSL. Yeah. Um, what it does for you, it, 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 it helps you dial into your company network securely. Um, we'll talk about security more in a minute, but, but security is going to be a big, a big discussion to have um, because it's very easy to think you're secure and we can't take security for granted. VDI, does anybody know what a VDI is? Okay, so uh, um, a VDI is a virtual desktop infrastructure. So we're very used to um, taking a physical desktop or a physical laptop and, and all of our work is, is done from that physical device. We lose that physical device, we're stuck. We're absolutely stuck because the number of times we hear, I had everything on there. Have we got a backup? Simon, I can't hear you. It's all right. Sorry, I was um, I was home working and chatting to somebody in the kitchen. Round, <laughs> just ignore me. If I want to speak, I'll unmute myself. Don't, don't feel guilty, Simon. It's perfectly okay to do that. You're working from home. I know. With your chamber wallpaper, it's brilliant. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So, virtual desktop infrastructure, um, we believe, is the future of the way we work, the future of IT. Your desktop will no longer be physical. Your desktop will become a means to connect. Your desktop will be in the cloud. Um, a very, very hard, um, um, very, very hard concept to grasp. But imagine you take your laptop, you throw it in the air, throw it as high as you can, and it just doesn't come back down. It doesn't come back. Doesn't come back down again. Your laptop's in the cloud, right? You need something to be able to connect to that laptop, right? So you'd use your mobile device. You'd use your a, a dumb terminal, which 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 can't do anything except connect, or you'd use um, a desktop or laptop device. The, the beauty of VDI is a virtual desktop. Because it's in the cloud, um, you've got all the things taken for granted. So security is taken for granted, um, being able to connect from anywhere, um, you're, you become device independent, and most organizations now are moving to VDIs uh, for, that, for that very reason. Um, do we have any questions on VDI or anything that you want to ask me? 
there are a couple of questions in the chat box, uh, Ram, but I think we'll, I'll, I'll say, they're, they're kind of more generic ones, so I'll save them till the end if you, if you want to ra yeah, rattle that's through. Fine. Uh, Simon, how, how am I doing for time? Because I've got a habit of talking a lot. Well, your, your 20 minutes presentation has now lasted 37. <laughs> no way. You're kidding me. <laughs> Right, I'll, I'll whiz through this. Right, okay. Um, RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. Um, one of the most useful ways of connecting into your workplace, one of the most probably least secure. I'll explain in a minute. So a remote desktop protocol, a remote desktop is basically when you, when you dial into something and it sends you the picture, right? You've probably heard of things like TeamViewer, GoToMeeting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A remote desktop is what they call a terminal server and it sends you a remote image of what you're doing to your device. Great way to connect, very insecure, and we'll explain why in a minute. Um, it's an absolute dream for hackers. Um, direct RDP from, from the web, for those of you that don't dial in from the internet, that don't use a VPN, right? Um, you, need, you, you, you need to look at your security because if you can access your work environment directly without two-factor authentication or without physically dialing into your company network, then so can other people. Uh, direct RDP is the biggest reason of why people get ransomware. Connectivity, Wi-Fi, cable, tethering, when you're on your home network, your, your, your businesses, your corporate businesses, your, whoever you work for, for, whichever business you work in, spend thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on securing their networks, only to let, if you've got EE broadband, for example, only to let um, a 40 pound router and a 25 pound broadband connection connect into it. Think about it. When you VPN into your company network, you make your company network as insecure as your home. Um, it, it, it's not something you'd consider. It's not something you, you, you do purposely. It's something that just happens as a, as a byproduct of being able to connect. So just think about some very, very basic things that you could do. Um, your Wi-Fi, maybe have a second uh, SSID, uh, call, it, call it work, yeah? Um, instead of using Wi-Fi, if you're sat next to your, if you're sat next to your um, router, plug a cable in, yeah? Could you use tethering off your mobile if you use connectivity? These are all things that we should consider. Uh, I'll take questions later. Firewall, um, firewall is what keeps people like me, not like me, because I'm all right, um, people out of your network that shouldn't be there. So it's the same thing as a lock on your door, right? Um, don't leave your company and home network insecure. Be careful of internet of things. Be careful of things like Alexa, because if you're connecting via these means, you're making your company network insecure. Um, what to use and when? Um, we probably take that as a discussion, to be fair. Uh, and I'll move on to the next slide, because I think the next slide is very important. Productivity tools for effective working. So most of you have a company shared drive. So if your company shared drive is, is um, physically on your company network, then you have to VPN into your company network to be able to access it. Uh, the minute you VPN into it, it's sending you the, the file over that VPN. Be very, very, very careful if you're working on a document over a VPN. If that VPN breaks and you're working on a document, you've lost that document. That doesn't apply to RDP or VDI environments, but just so that you know that that document is not stored locally, it's stored on your company network. Um, that's very different to a cloud drive. So you've probably heard of things like OneDrive um, and other cloud drive providers. If you're working on a, on a cloud drive, that doesn't apply. A, a, a cloud drive will store a local cache copy of that document um, on your laptop or your desktop. So if you get cut off halfway through, you will not lose your work. Uh, that's the biggest difference between the two. And I hope that was useful because not many people uh, know that. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about video conferencing. So video conferencing helps to improve communication and reestablish relationships. Uh, during a video conference, you get to see the body, language, and facial expressions of the participants, which leads to a more effective and faster collaboration. Zoom. Who's, who's heard of Zoom? Yeah, the, the e-briefing that took place uh, yesterday was done via Zoom. In fact, the, even the BBC presenters become a household name of Zoom. Uh, nobody knew what it was just a few months ago. Um, even the BBC presenter called it a Zoom conference, not a video conference. 
They called it a Zoom conference. The power of branding is amazing, right? Um, I had a whole topic on Zoom, but what I'm going to do is explain to you what Zoom does and what I'll do so I could do that effectively is I will stop sharing my screen for a second and I'll let you watch a quick video on Zoom. Simon? Am I am I host? Stop letting me do it. Your host. Um, Here we are. Yeah. Just, just let me do it now. You probably need to reshare your desktop, I think. Yeah. There we go. Zoom has revolutionized the way teams communicate. Whether you're connecting multiple conference rooms or meeting with attendees from their desktop or mobile devices, coming together face-to-face -face is as simple as a single touch. With the highest video and audio quality, bringing your team together on Zoom feels just like you're all in the same room. It's easy for everyone to join on video, which builds trust and engagement, making your team and their meetings more productive. Feature rich and simple to use, the Zoom mobile and desktop apps bring the whole experience together with built-in cross-platform group chat. Transform your communications experience with Zoom. Did you get that video? We did. Excellent. Okay. Um, while I'm sharing, I'll just share one more, one more to you, then I'll talk about both together. I want to share a small video about Microsoft Teams. Welcome to Microsoft Teams, a collaboration app to help your team stay organized and have conversations all in one place. Let's start with what else? Teams. Here you can see the list of all the teams you're on. Teams are made up of channels. You can build them by topic, department, or just for fun. Channels are where the real work gets done, where you hold meetings, have team conversations, and share files. At the top of each channel, you'll find tabs. They're like links to your favorite files, apps, and services. When you share a file in a channel conversation, you and your team can edit it at the same time and share thoughts alongside it. find all the files that have been shared in a channel, go to the Files tab. To see all files shared across Teams, select Files on the left. Want to talk privately with someone or a group? Click New Chat at the top and type the names. To make a call directly from a chat, click Video Call or audio call. In some cases, if your organization has it set up, you can call anyone from Teams using calls, even if they're not using Teams. In Calendar, you can see everything you've got lined up for the day or week, or schedule a meeting. This calendar syncs with your Outlook calendar. To get to an online Teams meeting, select Join. In a meeting, you can show content from your device or record your meeting. Go to Activity for a view that lets you catch up on all your unread messages, at mentions, replies, voicemails, and more. And use the command box to search for specific items or people, take quick actions, and launch apps. No matter where you are in Teams, the command box is right here for you. You can download the mobile app so you're in sync when you're on the go. Now bring in your colleagues and let the teamwork begin. Did you get that? We did. I'll just share my, my presentation again. Ram, while we're waiting for you to do that, we've had a question from, hang on, my screen's just changed now. <laughs> um, 
from Wendy, Wendy Bowers. Is Microsoft Teams like Office 365? Okay, brilliant. Good question, Wendy. Um, Teams is a collaboration platform. So Teams brings together all of the Microsoft products um, into one, into one, into one collaborative platform. So things like your email, uh, which is part of 365, things like SharePoint, where you put your files, OneDrive, where you put your files, as, again, that's part of 365. Uh, Teams brings it all together into one platform. Um, you've probably heard of Skype for Business. Skype for Business is now dead. So what Microsoft have done, they've incorporated that video conferencing suite again into, into Microsoft Teams. So Teams, as the name suggests, Teams is a single platform where you can communicate every single chat, every single email, all of your files, your folders, projects, anything that you're working on collaboratively, you can work on Excel documents, Word documents collaboratively with your team. At the click of a button, you want to talk to one of your colleagues who's logged into Teams. You click that button and you can do a video call or a voice call and you can, you can talk. Um, you can record the meeting and it all ends up in one single platform. It's desktop based, cloud based, it's also mobile based. It's the best platform out there on the marketplace for collaborative working. Um, uh, and yes, it's part of 365. Couple more questions, Ram. Um, Catherine says, is there something that's available? Is there a Google equivalent, a Google, a Google platform that's available? Our chef yes. from the chamber, sorry, I'll throw a few at you and you can take them all. Uh, and our chef at the chamber is asking about Teams. Is it free to use for guests? So if we, if, if we, we, can, we use it internally some, sometimes, but if we were to want to bring in an external contributor who wasn't in our team, could, could we do that? Right, okay, so I'll take the second question first, uh, which is about, uh, is it free for guests? Yes, it is, as long as they have a Microsoft account. So they need a live account or a Microsoft account. You can, you can bring them in. You can bring them in and they, and they, can, they, they can join the conference um, or, or, the, or the discussion, yeah? Um, does that, is, that what, is that what Shaf was asking? I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay, brilliant. And the first question was? The first question was, is there, a, is there a platform, a Google platform, is there a Google equivalent to Teams or, you know? Yes, Google? there is. Um, Google have had collaborative platforms for a number of years. Microsoft lagged a little bit behind. I think Microsoft have now accelerated massively uh, beyond, uh, beyond, Google's, uh, beyond Google. Uh, so the Google platform is called Google Hang Hangout. It, all it needs is a Gmail ID. So if you log on to the Google, you sign in with your Gmail ID, you can use something called Google Hang Hangout. And Hangout is basically designed so that you can, again, on your left-hand side, you get your collaborative chats and the people that are logged in. And on the right-hand side, you get your video conferencing facility and all the sort of tick box um, features that Teams offers. Um, what Google Hangouts won't do, unfortunately, is things like channels. And I'll just talk about channels very quickly because I think channels is a very, very powerful um, feature of Teams. So you've got different departments in your workplace. You've got accounts, sales. Uh, they're all based everywhere. Um, you've got your engineering department. You, you might want to create a channel. That channel, for example, might be the department. It might be accounts, right? So you would add everybody accounts to that channel. That, that's your team. Right? Anything you send to that channel, yeah, that is your team, right? They can discuss and see collaboratively what you see and what you send. It might be, it might be a project you're working on, for example, which involves sales, accounts, um, um, opera operations, uh, administration. You can add one or two people or as many people as you want to that channel, yeah? When you create a channel, and you, and you add those people in, those people become part of that team. Um, does that help? I think you're muted, Simon. Uh, I am. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think you answered the question. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions coming. I'm just conscious of time, because um, it's 20 past 11. Ram, how do you want to, do you want me to give you a few more questions, or do you want to, quickly rattle off I, and finish I, I, your presentation. I think this is probably going to be the main part of it. I'd rather take okay. the questions than to drone on about what I want to talk about. Fine. All right. Mick, Mick Corrigan says, which platform would you recommend for, for video group meetings or training course delivery? So that's your recommendation, Ram. Really good question. Um, it, you've got Microsoft Teams, right? 
brilliant internal platform, uh, great for video conferencing, great to record meetings, great for collaboration, right? My absolute recommended choice has got to be Zoom. Got to be Zoom. Zoom is a platform, if you wanted to, will actually link into, it'll actually link into, into Microsoft Teams as an app, right? So Zoom will become part of your Teams network, right? Where Zoom comes into its own is it's a, it is a dedicated video conferencing platform, allows webinars to be delivered, allows things like this to be delivered. It's technology in terms of video conferencing is second to none. If you have the right equipment, um, Zoom will automatically, in a meeting room situation, zoom into the actual, uh, into the person that's speaking. It'll move your camera. It will enhance audio. Its features are just second to none. Um, Zoom has to be that platform. It has to be. Yep. However, Zoom comes into its element when you've got bigger meetings and you've got bigger, um, you've got more numbers, right? If you've got less numbers, then perhaps you don't need to use the paid version of Zoom. You can probably use the free version of Zoom. The free version of Zoom will give you up to 100 participants, right? And will give you up to 40 minutes as a host in a meeting. Yeah? If you need more than 40 minutes, you need more than 100 participants, then you start paying for Zoom, which is $11.99 per month. Um, every month, uh, including support and everything else. Yeah. Um, my recommendation would be for, for everybody in this, in this, in this, in this webinar to, to look at these two platforms, Teams, yeah, and Zoom, and any information that you need, just, just take it either now or, or contact, um, contact either the chamber or ourselves offline, and we will advise you uh, totally FOC on that. Thanks, Ram. <laughs> Does that answer the question? Um, Safwan Patel says, do you know if Microsoft have fixed the Teams app, killing the processing usage? <laughs> Trust a... Safwan to <laughs> come up with a technical question. Um, right, okay, Saf, uh, good question. Um, Microsoft release uh, service patch, up, patch updates, as you know, security updates, every single minute of the day. Um, I believe one of those updates was about two weeks ago. It was actually capacity, um, server capacity, that was uh, causing the, the, the teams to hang, um, not the actual application itself. So uh, I think with Microsoft increasing that server capacity, I think as a product, byproduct of that, that problem's now been fixed. Would that help? Got a thumbs up from Safwan. Uh, Excellent. Paula, Paula Malcolm says, can channels within a team be made private? Or can yes. all members of the team site access any, ch any channel? Um, when, you, when you log into Microsoft Teams and you create a new channel or you even sending a message, right? There's several options you have. Um, that message could be sent privately to a particular individual, to the entire channel, to certain people in that channel, even cross channels if you wanted to. Um, you can even set up notifications so then the people within that channel receive a notification to say that you have received a new message. Yeah. So in answer to the question, yes, it can be private. Okay. Thanks, Ram. Catherine Dobson says it might be useful to discuss what's available for micro businesses, not having expensive interconnected and collaborative platforms. Is, but then I think she answers her own question. Is that the, is that the free version of Zoom, Ram, which... The, the, the free version of Zoom and Teams is not expensive. If um, um, it, it's very hard to, to explain the power of, 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 of Teams. When you're working in separate locations and you want to feel connected, there, this is probably, I'm not going to say the only, but it's by far the best platform you can be on where you can just instantly bring all of your business together, all of your projects together in one location, in one place. It will reduce your email traffic by 80%, I promise you. And if it doesn't, then I'll drink tea out of a saucer. Look forward to seeing that. Um, we've got a couple of people with hands up, uh, Ram, whether you want to bring them in. And I've got another question on the chat from Ram, who says, as a specialist engineering consultancy working in niche industries, we are asked for cyber essentials. How would we go about it, please? Right, okay, so Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus are a security standard that most businesses will, will aspire to. I'm guessing in the next 12 to 24 months, it will become an essential insurance requirement that you actually have as an organization, um, a rubber stamp 
like cyber essentials. It's um, it's it's going to get to this. It's going to get to the stage where I think uh, organisations will not deal with you if you don't have cyber essentials. Cyber essentials plus. It's a huge discussion of cyber essentials, but it's basically a rubber stamp to say that you meet security standards, that you take GDPR seriously, you take your firewalls, uh, manipulation and security of data very, very seriously, you have a password policy, and you secure your network. Um, that's cyber essentials in a nutshell. Does that help answer the question? I'm going to assume yes. Hi, hello guys. That was my question. Ram, so my question is when we're doing these remote working things, what is the provision to implement? Can we extend the cyber essentials from a work environment to working from home? Or what will we have to do? Yeah, so, so it depends on how you connect. So we go back to the previous slide where we talked about RDP and we talked about um, directly accessing your, your work terminals. Um, now, if you're using remote desktop protocol, RDP, which is a terminal server, um, am I, am I, are you with me on that? You know what yeah, that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are exposing your organization to, to a big, big risk and you're literally saying, hi, ransomware, come to me, come to me, right? The best way of connecting to a terminal server, do not make it available on the internet, right? Secure VPN into your network, use an internal IP address, connect internally. Don't connect to a terminal server externally. It's the best advice that I can give. Um, things like VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure, and a fully 100% cyber essentials compliant. Things like um, um, RDP into your desktop, yeah? After you've VPN into your company network. Again, these are cyber essentials um, compliant because once you VPN into your network, that connection is encrypted and it meets cyber essentials criteria. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ram. Thanks for that. And Andrew Jewardin, I think it's a tongue in cheek question because uh, Andrew's had a lot going on in the background. I've been watching his, uh, his vacuum cleaner going around behind him this, this morning. I, I can see that. I can see his Tesla in the background as well. It says, do any of these services come with restraint devices to stop young children interrupting you when working from home? <laughs> I think you've answered your own question there, uh, Andrew. Uh, when you're working from home, that is actually your children's environment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're an interruption to them. They're not an interruption to you. <laughs> Every five minutes sometimes. <laughs> Every five minutes, yeah. Again, it goes back to don't be embarrassed from working from home, right? Um, I, I was doing a meeting the other day, my child was playing the piano, and I was tempted to say stop, right? No, I, I, I moved. I moved, yeah? Yeah? So, so that's just a byproduct of working from home. Hello. Ram, you've got a couple of hands up. I've got um, Katie Mason with a hand up. Ram's also got his hand up. I don't know if that's another question or the other one we've already asked. Okay, so I, I can't see Kate. Can I, can I take the question from Katie? Um, uh, yeah. Katie, could you, could you put it on? Yeah, there she goes. Hi, morning all. Hi. Sorry, I put my hand up before um, to say that I'd heard something. Ah. So <laughs> I didn't have a question. Um, but. All right, yeah. well, nice to see you, Katie. Anyway. Yeah, I just okay. think, I think nice it's been interesting. I think it's been interesting with what Andrew said about the interruptions as well, because it's key that we make that space, absolutely. So, it, it, I, I, think, I think you're right there, Katie. I think it's key that we make that space. And we also understand where you actually are. So you are actually at home. It's got its benefits to the employer. It's got its benefits to the staff. It's got its benefits to yourself. It's also got its benefits in terms of family life. I, I would say to anybody, don't feel guilty about your kids walking into a meeting. The my kids just, just walk past me and I, I don't feel guilty about it at all. Lose the guilt. I think we're up to date with questions, Ram. So, um, yeah. do you want to... Did, did, Ram, did Ram have a question for me? Another question? He's taking his hand down now. No, nope, he's taking his hand down now. Right, okay, brilliant. So, so I'll whisk, how much time do I have left? Um, well, we're at, we're, at, we're at the official end now. So you've probably got maybe 10 minutes and then I think we'll start to lose people. Right, okay, fine. So we're at the end. So I'm going to skip Trello, skip hosted VoIP. Um, well, hosted VoIP is telephony, right? So um, um, I might as well go on about telephony for, for, a, for, a, for a short time. So these are enabling factors that let people work from, from any location. Um, we work on a, on a hosted app. So our telephone system, my mobile phone is now an extension of my telephone system at work, right? So hosted voice over IP makes all of these features possible. So you could be anywhere and you could literally be extension 232, right? Um, 
Hosted VoIP also allows you to take your handset home if you want to, or have a secondary handset. Uh, you just plug it into your router via an RJ45 cable, and you're effectively at work. Um, hosted VoIP has got a whole host of other features, but something that's really useful is something called soft phone. Now, there's an argument to say with, with, with software like Zoom and Teams, do you really need a soft phone? But a soft phone is basically you plug it into your laptop, you wear a headset, and again, you are extension, for example, 232. Um, House Party is an app. Um, if you haven't used it, download it, have a look. So when we talk about social isolation, uh, House Party breaks all the barriers of social isolation. It's literally that, House Party. Call it Work Party, right? Get your colleagues on the app and get it downloaded. It's free of charge and use it. You can, you can, you can, you can share ideas, you can sh collaborate and start to have some fun together. Um, video conferencing, I'll rush through this because we're out of time. Um, it's designed to reduce travel time and costs. Zoom and Teams does that. Optimize attendance, record meetings, which you couldn't possibly do before unless you had a video cam or doing it on a mobile phone. Structure meetings with improved communication. Yeah, you can hold meetings from anywhere. Um, increase productivity, collaborate. Collaboration tools are just fantastic. You can search, you can add files, whatever you want to do with them. And people who use these productivity tools will end up with a sustained competitive advantage because they'd be able to get things done more efficiently and quicker. Um, right, so we've got a Q&A here, right? If, um, which I'll put out to everybody. I'll, I'll throw in Sharafat's earlier question to start us off. Um, do you think with what's happening, uh, the way we're embracing IT at the moment, that this will, it is, you know, once we're through this particular pandemic, do you think that will then change how we view work and change the way people work forever? Yes, is the, is the, is the answer. Um, now, this, this pandemic has got, obviously, it, it's, it's, it's a nightmare for everybody. It's, um, it's got devastating effects in, in, in the workplace and, and beyond. Now, now the, the one advantage I think it's, it's brought is, is it's, it's given us the mindset. The, the, te the technology has been there for 10 years uh, and longer. It's now given us the mindset to allow people to work from where they want to work from. Um, me, personally, I, I am more productive when I'm outside the office. Um, when I'm in the office, I get literally nothing at all done. So what's wrong with me or somebody else working from home? Um, the business landscape has changed. The business landscape is changing. Collaboration tools are, are, are the key to its success. Technology is the key to its success and also connectivity. Um, and I don't just mean physical connectivity. I mean, like what the Chamber is doing here, what Chamber Live is doing here, um, is connecting like-minded businesses to talk about something that they can take away from this webinar and apply to their own business. Yeah, I think just, just us as an organisation, we've been talking about being unable to access our CRM system from home, certainly since I've been at the Chamber, and now we can. So it's, it's, can. it's forced us to sort of address some issues and, and, and to move forward a little bit. On the chat box, Mohammed Adam says he's got a question. So uh, do you want to unmute your microphone and, and put your question directly to Ram? Hey, Ram, can you hear me? Hi, Mohammed. I can see and hear you. Amazing. How are you? Hi, yes. Um, I just have a question regarding, uh, you know, like, you know, when you're staying on screen. I know today in the area we're coming to, like, uh, we're isolated at home. Um, as your knowledge, uh, Ram, uh, if you tell the people that, uh, how many minutes do we have a, a break, you know, from screen, you know? From screen? Yeah. Um, what I tend to do, I, I set my alarm, right? So yeah. every, every couple of hours, I set my alarm and, and I go for a walk. I, I just walk away from the screen. Mm. Something, else, um, something else I do, I use my mobile phone a lot, right? Yeah. Um, you will not believe, if you walk, when, when I'm on my mobile phone, I cannot sit still, right? I can't sit still anyway, to be fair, right? But when I'm on the mobile, walk, walk around your living room, walk around the house, yeah? Yeah, you will do 5,000 steps in that day. Walk up the stairs, walk down the stairs, walk around your garden, doesn't matter, right? Yeah, you will do 5,000 steps. You might get cut off once or twice, right? Does it matter, ring them back, yeah? Yeah, yeah? it's very important to get away from your screen. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea. And I go in there. I like that way. Yes. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, and um, Becky's raised her hand. Becky, do you want to unmute your mic? Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Simon. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to raise a question for everyone. Really, I think a lot of people at the moment are scared of old technology versus new. So I just wanted to um, wondered if Ram could talk a bit more about. VoIP versus an ISDN traditional phone call a bit more. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, Becky. So, so ISDN is is considered as traditional connectivity. It's um it's decades old now. as ISDN extremely yeah. reliable, um, yeah. extremely in contrast expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. BT have announced that by 2025, uh, PSTN in particular ISDN will become a dead product. Right. So this will naturally force people to move into what they call voice over IP. Right. So voice over IP is basically your voice being sent over the Internet. Yeah. So we're using the power of the Internet to, to be able to not only do video calls, but to make voice calls. Right. So so if we're talking about out with ISDN and in with voice, not only will it save organizations time and money. Yeah. It will deliver a whole multitude of additional converged services that they can immediately access from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. No longer are these services limited to corporate organizations, big boys, right? Um, every individual can have access to these services and yeah. every individual can use these services. It's just a fantastic and fabulous place to be. Absolutely. And I think we can find some silver linings from this. So thank you very much for going into detail on that for everyone. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Thanks really Becky. Question. Thank you very much. Sharafat uh, has another question. Do you want to unmute your mic, Sharafat? Hi, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yes, oh, we, we can, can now. We can see and hear you. Yeah. Okay. Ram, you, you talked about remote desktop earlier um, and the security risk that it poses. Um, what about remote desktop with two-step authentication? Is that still as risky? Um, you, you, you almost negate part of the risk um, with two-factor authentication. The, the, only, the only issue you have, you have with remote desktop is, <laughs> sorry Simon, it's by, by nature, it's insecure. So when you open a port to, to anybody on the internet, um, you're inviting those people on the internet to come into your corporate network. And if you're inviting a, a potential hacker to come into your corporate network, trust me, they will, yeah? Mm. Probably as high as 60 to 70 percent of instances where organizations have got ransomware have been through internet based remote desktop on standard ports. Um, there's several yes. ways you can secure your remote desktop. You can use something called, you might want to write this down actually, RDP Defender. RDP, RDP Defender is free software. They might, they might have a paid license as well. I can come back to you on that. But RDP Defender is free software which you can install on your remote desktop server that will literally block all spoof IP addresses. It's, um, it's the greatest bit of security you can put into a remote desktop solution. My strongest advice for remote desktop is don't make it available on the internet, have it internal only. If you wanna to connect to a remote desktop, dial into your company network via a VPN, then connect on an internal IP to your terminal server. It's secure. Okay, thank you. To answer your question. Which is uh, Shaf, I know Shaf from the chamber is nodding his head because that's what we're doing. Oh, so uh, any, any last questions before we say our formal thank yous to Ram uh, from anyone either wave at your screen or raise your hand. Oh, Becky, Becky, I thought yeah, you were yeah, okay. yeah. Go on, Becky. Hi, yeah. I've just unmuted myself again. Thanks um, for, for that, just lastly. I just wanted to make everybody aware, just a bit of free advice as well, that in terms of security on a VoIP telephone system, if you are using one, most providers should be able to put a cap on this to avoid any telephony fraud and security that way as well. If anybody else afterwards need any advice on this, then let me know. As I said, your, your current provider should be able to put this in place for you without very much trouble anyway. Thanks, Beckett. Good point. Um, Thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands up. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, last chance to unmute your mics. Ram, any, any last comments before we wrap up? I, I want to apologise firstly to everybody because we've, we've overrun on the session. Um, I do have a habit of, of, of talking. When I set out on this presentation, 
because I'm not good, good with presentations, I thought, how are we going to spend an hour's session? Uh, what, what are we going to talk about? How is it going to turn out? I just hope that all of you businesses, uh, all the people that have joined this, will take a little snippet of this away and apply it into your business. Hand on my heart, um, we, we, we feel very responsible, uh, a, a big sense of responsibility at the moment, being a tech business, um, in helping people to, to, to be able to do what they need to do in their businesses. After all, if businesses don't exist, then, then we don't exist. We have no one to support. Yeah. Uh, the Chamber, I want to thank the Chamber for being very instrumental in putting these live sessions on of all the people concerned here. Um, a big applause to them because, because what you've done, um, East Lanks Chamber, is you've led from the front. Yeah. You've connected people. You've connected thoughts. You've connected ideas. Yeah. And, and, and you know, a big hats off to you all. Uh, for joining today and can I just say one last thing before I before I leave because I'm pretty sick of the sound of my voice now by now right is this is all part of being being part of the UK for us we are never been prouder uh, to be a UK business and to see how UK businesses through these hard times have pulled together uh, Lancashire businesses have pulled together to help each other yeah we've seen it firsthand People have been lending people things. People have been offering free advice, free support. And, and it is quite an emotional time, I think, for all of us to just see that strength, solidarity, solitude. And if there's one good thing uh, that's to come out of this COVID crisis, yeah, it's actually this. And that is, it's brought us all together. And together, we will beat this COVID crisis. We will kill it, yeah? It will never rear, rear its ugly head again, yeah? And for Sorry. anybody who has any questions, or anything, need any advice on any part of this, um, contact me directly. It's purely free of charge uh, advice. Um, anything you need from us, yeah, it's, we're not looking to profiteer from uh, the COVID crisis in any shape or form. Contact us anytime, day or night, we're there for you. And one final thing is, when you're working from home, if you haven't tried this, right, this is tea in a saucer, honestly, it's absolute heaven, right? Heaven, right? Just try it. This is what I do when I'm at home. I put a bit of biscuit in there, right? And just give this a go, listen. It's heaven. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you, Ram. Thank you so much for being our first well speaker well on Chamber Live. Thank you, Ram, that's been brilliant. Thank you, thank you Ram. Thank, thank you. you very much, Ram. Thank you, Ram. Just, a quick, just a quick thank reminder, you, everybody. Much, we didn't hear the slurp though. <laughs> Chamberlive.co.uk is the place to go uh, for all our future Chamber Live events. Uh, next one is tomorrow. We've got a special Chamber Live edition of Sales Club tomorrow morning at 10.30. We've over 100 delegates registered on that. Making the most of the madness, I think, is the topic. Uh, please do use the Chamber Live uh, group on LinkedIn for follow-up conversations. Uh, any comments on today's session? We're also going to send out, Shaf, I'm looking at you. We're also going to send out a, a short survey uh, to get your feedback on Chamber Live as we evolve this product and as we, as we evolve this. So watch out for that in your inboxes today. And finally, um, just to echo what Ram said, collectively, East Lancashire businesses, Lancashire businesses, UK businesses, we're facing a lot. The, all of the country's facing a lot, but together we will get through all this. Um, if you want specific information for your business, go to the coronavirus hub on the Chamber website, or please don't hesitate to contact any of your memberships team. Uh, stay safe, everybody, and wash your hands. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well done, team. Well done, everyone. Well, well done. done. Thank you. Thanks, Ram. Thanks, thank Simon. You. Amazing. Thank you, Ram. You smashed it. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Ram, can you, you end them? You Ram, you need to either give me host privileges or end the meeting yourself, whichever. Okay, I'll 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 do that. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Sam, can I keep you for a minute? Debbie, you owe me a big hug. Yeah, where are you? Send you a virtual one now, bit. Anyone now, bit? Oh. Bit, you owe me a pint. <laughs>